So consider this example of a multiplier and the multiplicand operand here actually is um, irrelevant. It could be anything. I'm just interested in the multiplier operand. So the multiplier operand is um, eight bits, but let's consider if we take pairs of bits in the multiplier operand and compress them using binary representation so that we have radix four numbers instead of radix two. So we don't have binary numbers, we have numbers to the base of four. This will um, transform the multiplication operation into the following. The zero zero becomes a zero, the one one becomes a three, the zero one becomes a one, and the one zero becomes a two. And so if we look at this, we could actually reduce the number of summands that we uh, produce out of, uh, uh, out of the multiplication operation, which could greatly influence the complexity of the multiplier. So now we have uh, this zero multiplying uh, the multiplier, whatever the multiplier is. Let's just call it A for now. So we're going to have zero, uh, zero, 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 right? And then three multiplied by the multiplier by the multiplicand operand but instead of shifting one bit to the uh, left we're going to shift two bits to the left because we have a base uh, four multiplier instead of a base one multiplier so uh, we're going to multiply this three multiplied by the whole multiplicand and it's going to produce uh, partial products which are now a little bit more complicated than what we are, we're used to and when we multiply one by the multiplicand, we again have to shift two bits to the left. And when we multiply two, we have to shift two bits to the left. So instead of having um, eight summands, we now have only four summands. And this greatly reduces the number of additions that we have to produce. On the other hand, there's a hidden complexity here, which is the complexity of calculating the partial products. Like I wrote down x's here because actually multiplying by three is not easy. Multiplying whatever is here by three is much harder than multiplying by either one or zero. So um, when we normally did binary multiplication, the partial product was just an AND gate that combined the two bits from the multiplier and the multiplicand. In this case, we have a three, which is really hard to do. So, I mean, multiplying the multiplicand by three is equivalent to shifting, which is multiplying by two, then adding, which is equivalent to multiplying by one. And so if the multiplicand is A, uh, multiplying by three is going to be two plus one times A, which means that we are actually doing a shift and then add, which means that we are implicitly within calculating these x's, we're actually doing another sum and addition. So we haven't actually reduced the complexity of anything. And this is just as complex as it started out. On the other hand, if we at first encode the multiplier operand using both recoding, then we reach something really useful and it's called the modified booth algorithm. So with the modified booth algorithm, we will notice something really awesome. So let's try to illustrate this using uh, an example. So let's just imagine that we have um, a multiplier operand that looks uh, something like this. And let's cover it using overlapping uh, pairs as we did before. Um, now, when we see a zero, 0, we interpret it as a 0, a zero, 1 is interpreted as a minus 1, a one, 1 is interpreted as a 0, a zero, 1 is interpreted as a 1, and then zero, 0 as 0, zero, 1 minus 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. And so if we take pairs of bits, and we can sign extend if we need to, and in this case, we don't actually uh, cover them using overlapping pairs. They have to be non-overlapping pairs. Then the first pair of bits is interpreted as minus two because it's minus one, zero. The second is interpreted as a two, minus two, zero, zero, one, and zero. And so if you look at the possibilities that come from covering pairs of bits here, the possibilities are zero, minus one, minus two, and two. 
And so if you imagine that you do a booth recording of the multiplier operand first before you do this radix four thing, then you only have the possibility of having a zero, which when we calculate partial products is trivial, a minus one, which is basically just calculating the uh, two's complement of the multiplicand, a one, which is an AND gate, a two, which is a shift to the left, and a minus two, which is a shift to the left and a uh, two's complement. So you don't actually need to calculate partial products that are any more complicated than the partial products you normally calculate. But why? I mean, we have two bits here and we are only considering uh, some of the possibilities. So we are considering the possibility that the pair would be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, minus 1, 0, and 0, minus 1. And we are interpreting this as a 0, 1, 2, minus 2, and minus 1. But what about 1, 1, and minus 1, minus 1, and minus 1, 1, and 1, minus 1? So these two are actual possibilities. Minus 1, 1 is equivalent to minus 2 plus 1, which is minus 1. And 1 minus 1 is equivalent to 2 minus 1, which is plus 1. So they are exactly equivalent to the two cases we saw here, and they give us no trouble. But these two are problematic because this is 3 and this is minus 3. And so if these are possibilities, then we return back to this case where calculating the partial products was too complicated. And in fact, we are even more complicated now because we need to calculate 3 and minus 3. But the reality is you will never see this, these two cases, if you do both recording first. Why? Because when you do both recording for the multiplier operand, ones and minus ones represent something very specific. When you see a one, this means you are exiting a string of ones. When you see a minus one, that means you are entering a string of ones. We do both recording specifically so that we never see strings of ones or alternatively strings of minus ones. And so when you see a minus one, that means that you just entered into a string of ones. You cannot see another minus one immediately after it because you cannot enter another string of ones without first exiting this string of ones. So in order to see another minus one, you have to see a one first, which returns us to this case. Similarly, if you see a one, then that means you are exiting from a string of ones. You cannot, you cannot then re-exit another string of ones without first entering another string of ones. And so you can only see another one if you see another minus one at some point. And so the sequence one, one and minus one, minus one are impossible to see if you do uh, booth recording for the multiplier operand first.